right on. Well, hey, good morning. Good to see you. I'm going to make up for some of that low energy in the intro, but because I'm going to bring the energy today. So hopefully you uh, buckle your seatbelts, folks, as we're going someplace today. Well, welcome to New Life. My name is Nate. I'm one of the pastors on staff. I've been here for a little over 12 years. Come on. How many of you here in the beginning when I was here? Yes, there you go. Man, I'll just kind of make fun of myself. When I first started preaching, this whole side of my body would just be soaking wet. You remember those moments, folks? Yeah, there you go. That's why we wear black. I wear black. It's a lot better now, but man, we just want to welcome all of you who are worshiping with us, though, today at New Life that are at our Kearney campus, as well as our Ogallala and uh, our North Platte campus, as well as worshiping with us online. We're glad that you're here. We're kicking off a brand new teaching series called Known. I'm super pumped about it. So for the next four weeks, basically, this is what you need to do. You just need to bring your, your smartphone or you need to bring your Bible, because we're going to be looking at, the, at Psalm chapter one, or Psalms chapter 139. We're just going to look at, that, look at that chapter over the next four weeks, and we're going to look at the classic attributes of God. This was one of those things that when Pastor Jeff kind of asks the team, he kind of goes, he reaches out to the staff and goes, hey, what do you guys think, or where do you think we're going this, this year? And this is something that just kind of stood out to me. And so we're going to look at the classic attributes of God, his omniscience, his omnipresence, his omnipotence, his omnibulence. And all of these attributes are found in Psalm 139. So that's where we're going to be living. And so when we, when we look at it, over the next four weeks, what we're going to discover is that we have an all-knowing, always present, and he's an all-powerful and all-good God who's always for us and never against us. Amen? Amen. So that's where we're going to go. And so today we're going to be looking at omniscience. God is all-knowing. I love this. This is something that we've got to get inside of our hearts. If we don't get this inside of our hearts, then we, we miss the Christian life. We miss the, the fullness of joy that we can be living out uh, because of the God that we serve. Like God has, wants to deposit this all-knowing understanding to help us live out the joy and this fullness of life that he's designed for us. And so today, I, I want you to just think for just a moment. I want you to think back for a, in a time, maybe it's even currently present in this moment. I want you to think about a time when you were searching to be known. Think about it. A time when you were searching to be known, maybe it was in middle school, and you're, you know, you're trying to fit in, you got that awkward, you know, your, your teeth are changing, your hair's growing out, your ears are getting bigger, whatever's happening. You're trying to fit in with the in crowd, and maybe you're trying to find your place to be known in middle school, or maybe it was in high school. You're, you know, you're, you're trying out as an athlete, or you're going to go, man, I'm, I'm really smart, so you're finding, you're kind of coming into your own to be known as someone who is, who's really smart and, and trying different things. Or maybe high school didn't go so well, and now you're into college, and you're going, man, I don't want any of that path from, my, from high school to follow me into college, and you're starting out on a new path of, of finding yourself to be known in a, in a new way. You're discovering yourself. For others of you, you maybe you're, you're middle-aged here, and you thought you were known. You thought you knew who you were, but you're kind of coming into this place of, man, I'm thinking about retirement. I don't necessarily know who I am. Or you find yourself just in this, this lagging place of going, I don't know. I thought I knew who I was, but I don't really know who you are. You find yourself maybe more on the edge of a midlife crisis, maybe. Well, here, let me just tell you a little bit of story about myself when I was a, a senior in high school and I, I wanted to be known. So I grew up in North Platte, so all my North Platte people, yes, I, I, and so I graduated in 2002, so, so that ages me just a little bit. But if you're from North Platte, you knew that there was an old high school, which was two, two blocks long, and so every, uh, every class, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, they all had their own heaters, and it was a cool thing to be at the heater. And so my freshman, sophomore, junior year, I was more of a timid, quiet guy. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of confidence. I didn't know who I was. And so I just kind of went and flowed through the motions. But as I'm leading up to my senior year, I remember I'm going to go, I'm going to be more confident. I'm just going to be myself. And I remember that first day of my senior year, I walk up to the senior heaters because I had played basketball my sophomore year. So I knew some of the guys that were there at the senior heater. So I walked up and I just was being myself. And so I'm a Christian. So I probably told a couple funny Christian jokes. Do you mind if I share one with you? Okay, here we go. So I busted out my best Noah Ark, you know, jokes. Ready? Here we go. Why didn't they play cards on the Ark? Because Noah was always standing on the deck. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, here you go. Okay, yeah, right. I know, that was lame. Here's a, here, I got one more for you. Why didn't Noah go fishing? Because he only had two worms. 
Come on, there you go. He only had two, right, right? And so some of you hate worms, so you're wishing, man, no, why didn't you dunk that pole in there? Like, why aren't you fishing? And others of you, like, you love fishing, and you're like, praise the Lord, we have worms. But whatever. But I didn't say those jokes, but I came in and was just being more confident and said some funny things, and people started laughing. And this is the thing. High schoolers can be mean. Anybody remember high school? Anybody in high school? High schoolers can be mean, and somebody comes up to me and goes, man, where did you transfer from? And I was like, yeah, I've been here all three years. But I had this desire to be known. I wanted to be known. And I don't know about you. I love when I'm known. Just yesterday, I went into the local coffee shop. And as I walk in, they said, hey, Nate, are you having the usual? I'm like, yes, we are. Make it two shots. Come on. Spice it up. Here we go. I got to preach tomorrow. No, no, I'm just kidding. And so I, we love to be known. Sometimes I'll walk around and people, they'll come up to me and they'll go, oh, you're the dog guy. Yeah, I'm the dog guy sometimes. Yeah, some of you are the dog guys, people too. But yeah, but we all love to be known. Some of you are known for being so-and-so's mom and dad, right? Some of you are known for being mom and, or so-and-so's mom and dad and it ain't so good. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes. But all of us are known for something. Some of us are the athlete, the student, the boss, the doctor, the employee, the grandma, and the grandma, and the grandpa. And then there are some of you who really want to be known, and we all know this because we see how many posts that you put on social media. You really want to be known. But we give you grace. God bless you. We haven't befriended you yet, you know, whatever. So today, I want you just to think for a moment today. Think about what is the real reason for wanting to be known. What is the real reason that you want to be known? What is, what's really going on inside of you? Because there's something deeper. And I believe it's two things right here. It's significance and security. I think all of us, all of us are looking and searching for a sense of significance and security. This is what I know about our God. He's all-knowing. He knows his significance because he's God, amen? He's completely secure in what's going on in this world, and we can trust him, Amen. But we as as humans, we are looking for significance and security. I find my value and self-worth when I'm known. And the same thing is true for you. You find your significance and security, value and self-worth when you're known today. So all of us, listen to me, all of us are in the same boat this morning. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're in the same boat together. There you go. Look at the other person. Don't leave them out. We're in the same boat together. This is the thing. All of us are searching Or at one time, yeah, nice boat. I like it. Some of you are in a really nice boat. All of us are searching or at one time have searched to be known, right? All of us are searching or at one time have searched to be known. Why? Because God put it inside of you. You were created to be known. Why? Because God has a desire. We were created in the image of God. God has a desire to be known. He wants all of mankind, the Bible says. He wants every knee, or every knee will bow at one time, but he wants everybody to come to a relationship to know who God is. And if that's who we were created in the image of, it's, it's, it's in us to be known. We want to be known. But here's the thing. This is where it gets a little bit dangerous. You and I have free will, and we get to make a decision. And so today we have two choices on where you can go with finding your significance and your, your security to be known. You can look to the external, to the world, to define you. And they'll know you for what? Your career, how much money you make, your education, the different titles that you hold, maybe your family name, different achievements, which bring, they do bring significance and security, but I would suggest it's only temporary. Why? Because our world is always changing. That's the thing with this world. Our world is always changing, and the world will tell you you're known until the world doesn't tell you that, and it says you've cha- you're, it's changed, we've changed, the world has changed, and you're irrelevant, and you're not significant any longer. Have you ever had that happen where you were trying to be so cool, you're trying to be into everything, and then the world goes, nope, we're going a different direction, and you're like, whoa, and you feel this insecurity of like, man, now I've got to keep proving myself. I've got to be, continue to keep up with the world, and that's what happens if we're just looking to the world for significance and security. And the second choice that you can make this morning is this. You can begin to look to God Embracing him and his word to understand that he created you and he designed you because you're fully known and he loves you. And you can turn to him and no matter what your past is, no matter what the current situation is, your present and your future, he knows all about you. Amen, church? That's, that's some good news right there. That he, you can turn to him and you can look to him and you don't have to try to prove yourself at all. See, God's word doesn't change. You're always relevant and significant to him. So here's the big question. 
The question is, where do you find yourself searching to be known? Is it in the world or from God? If, you're at the, if you were here at the Global Leadership Summit at, at one of our campuses even, you heard back in August, you heard one of our pre- presenters said this, your outlook determines your outcome. Your outlook determines your outcome, and this is true for you as you search to be known. What, do you be, what are you looking at? What are you searching for? What is your outlook? Because whatever you're, you're looking at is going to determine your outcome. But like I said earlier, God put a desire in all of us to be known by him. He provides peace, security, and contentment that, his, that this world can never provide. So today we're going to look at Psalm, uh, the Psalms, Psalm uh, 139, verses 1 through 6. So if you've got your smartphone and you've got your Bible today, we're going to look at that in just a moment. But David reflects on God's omniscience, his all-knowing nature. He outlines a, uh, a variety of ways in which God knows him personally, and then this is the same is true for us. He knows you personally. So we're going to look at verse 1 right here. It's on the screen. Would you read it aloud with me? It says this, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. I love that. David says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. And when I read this verse, this is what it tells me. God is especially interested in me. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, God is especially interested in me. He is. He's interested in me. He's interested in you personally. He loves you. He wants to be invested in you. And I love this because this, when, you, when you read it, you're like, have you ever, when you read it, you think of like, it should say like, God knows me. But it says known. Some of you know me. Some of you know my past. You know my present. None of you know what my future looks like. And I know the same for some of you today. I know your past. I know your present. Some of you, I'm just meeting you today, so I only know you right now in the present. But God, he's he known. He known. He known my past, my present, and he sees my future. Come on. Yes. And he, he sees it all. He understands it. Think about it this way. Depending on what generation you're from or what collar you wear, maybe your blue collar or a little white collar. Here we go. When you don't know something, where do you go to find it out? Google. You go to Google, right? Okay, see, that's a younger generation. They just Google everything. And so you go to Google, and you, and you search to find, and you go, okay, tell me more about this. And, and so recently, I have to tell you just a little bit about something. My, trick, my truck, um, the heater went out last week. And so I'm like, man, it's going to get colder. I know I need to fix this, but it's an older pickup, and I don't want to spend a lot of money on it. And so I Google how to fix the heater of my pickup. Yeah. So what happens? You get 50 YouTube videos, right? The first video is some gentleman who's got white gloves on, prim and proper, tells me it's going to take eight hours and I have to pull the whole dash off. And if I took it to someone, a mechanic to fix it, it was going to cost me $1,000. I'm like, I'm sorry, sir. This is what I said to the video because I talk to myself sometimes. I said, I'm sorry, sir. I don't need to wear white gloves. My, my truck smells like wet dog. And so I'm like, next video. I go to the next video. This is a little bit um, less prim and proper. And the guy's like, it's going to take you five hours and you can do this. And I'm going, still not good enough. So I flip through a little bit further down to the bottom. And guess what I find? I find a video of a redneck dude. I'm like, this guy's my guy. He goes, do you have an hour? I'm like, yes, sir, I do. He says, do you have a socket set? I'm like, yes, sir, I do. He says, and then you need a sawzall. And I'm like, I'm in. So I rip off the side, I get in there, I cut the piece out that is keeping me from the part that I need to fix. In an hour and 30 minutes, because it took me a little bit longer, I'm not the, big, the greatest handyman, and a few plastic pieces parts later, I got that thing fixed for $35. Yeah. Yes, right, come on. And this is what I love about God, that he is searching after you. Can you, can you, are you with me? He just doesn't take the first video and goes, oh, this, this woman or this sir is prim and proper and just goes, no, he searches through all the things about you from your past, your present, and your future this morning. Man, if you are a gardener, a farmer, or a yard worker, you get this concept of searching and digging. You understand that you have to dig and search through the layers to get the outcome that you want. And that's what God does through us. He, he searches through the layers of our soul and when God is finished, he knows that there is, he knows everything about us. There isn't some, anything that he doesn't know. Man, that's the God that we serve. What also excites me about God is this. In my past, he doesn't hold it against me. Hallelujah. 
He knows my past, but he doesn't hold it, hold it against me. He sees my present and believes in me, but loves me too much just to leave me where I'm at. Right. Today, some of you are here, and you're just going, man, I'm here. I've arrived. No, there's more things that you can begin to learn about God, and there's more things about God that wants to continue to, to build you in and make you into the man or the woman of God that he's created you to be. And then I love this. He knows my future and what's best for me. I think I know what's best for me. Anybody else? Yeah. I don't play the lottery, but I think it would be great to win the lottery. Right? That would be best. Probably not. But God knows what's best, so can you trust him in that, whatever might come? The good, the bad, the ugly parts. Can you trust him that he sees you? Sometimes, I, okay, I get this. We do things to ourselves, and then we blame it on God. Anybody out there, you ever done that? You're like, you made a poor decision, and it's like, God, why are you allowing this to happen? Well, that's you. And God allowed it to happen, but it's going to teach you something if you'll allow it to. It'll teach you something. Today, I'm confident in this, that God is always for us, never against us. And when good times and difficult times come, there is always hope in Jesus. There's always hope today. So that's verse 1. Are you guys, you good? You want to continue to this morning? Okay, all right, we're going to keep going. Verse 2, 2 through 5 says this. You don't have to read this with me, but I'll read it. You can just read it on the screen. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Man, when I read this, this tells me that God knows everything about me. God knows everything about me. And, okay, here we go. He knows my habits. He knows your habits. Anybody got some bad habits? Come on, be honest with me. Yes, some of us have some bad habits, and God knows about them. And God would love for you to bring those bad habits, and you're like, man, this is not manifesting what I thought it would do, or I'm continuing to do this, and I'm not getting the results that I want. God would love for you to bring that before him, even though he knows it, but bringing it before him and saying, God, would you help me? Because God knows your habits. He knows when you sleep. Some of you, you don't sleep very good. And there's, there's something going on there. And you can bring it to God, and he can help you and reveal to you what I eat, where I go, and what I'm about to say. Here's the thing I th with humans. I think we so many times we compartmentalize things. And so what happens is if we go back to the outlook piece, where we look is key. This morning, some of you have had some really good things happen in your life. And the stack could be huge this morning. Good things that have happened in your life. But then over here on this side, you have all the bad things. You notice where my head is? We begin to look over to the bad things and we begin to forget what God has done in his faithfulness. And I think what we need to do is the bad things might not be very, there might not be very many of them, but they're really bad. And what I think we need to do as Christians, we need to bring them together before God and lay them before God and say, God, this thing is really bad, but man, look at all the good things you've done and look at your faithfulness. And when things are really good and there's not a lot of bad things going on, God reminds us you got to stay humble. You know what I'm saying today, church? Stop getting your, compartmentalizing the good and the bad, but bring it together before God and go, God, here it is. Look, I can see all of your faithfulness. And God, even in the bad, you're faithful. Amen. I, I think it's just, a, it's just a perspective change for us that we can begin to look at because God is especially, he's interested in you and, and he knows everything about you. God knows everything about me. I wrote this down in, when I was preparing this, so I'm just going to read this part to you. But this is what stood out to me, and hopefully it encourages you. He touches me when I need comfort. Anybody today? God protects me when I feel insecure and insignificant. God knows our every move, our every thought. He even knows what we'll say and what we'll do in the future. God has a knowledge about me that I don't even know about myself. And when I was thinking about that piece where God knows everything about me even better than I know myself, it, it made me think. Some of you see a counselor. Some of you need to see a counselor. But we, if you're a follower of Jesus, you have the greatest counselor 24-7 available to you called the Holy Spirit. And he's a person. He's a person of the Trinity. And he's available to you to encourage you. And so this is what I want, this is what I want you to do. I want you to ask yourself this question. Because some of you are doing something you know you're doing something, but you don't know why you're doing it. 
So I want you to ask yourself this question. Why or what is the reason I do this? You get to, you get to define what the this is, but some of us, some of you have, have a wound. And I'm going to go, I'm going to be first. I'm going to tell you about a wound that I have. I can't be so uh, discreet about it because this person it goes to our church, but I had a wound. And guess what? Every time I, this, guess where this wound would always come out at? This happened about five years ago. Every time I had this wound, every time that I would begin to get up, to on the, on the, up here on the stage to preach, this wound would just reveal itself. I would begin to say things because I had a wound about this person. And I'd be like, where's this coming from? It's not even in my notes. And I had this wound that was inside of me. And, I, and eventually I was like, Lord, why, why does this wound just come out when I preach? And the Lord didn't necessarily give me an answer, but I, I realized what the wound was. And I had to step back and go to the Lord into my prayer closet and go, God, would you bring healing to me? Would you help me with this wound that I have? Because this wound to you may not seem like a big deal. It didn't seem like a big deal to me because it didn't come out every day all the time, but it came out in certain moments and I was doing this thing and I was saying things that I didn't necessarily want to say that I was later regretting and have to go back and apologize for. For some of you, you, there's something that you do that somebody triggers or something triggers inside of you, maybe from your past childhood or a past relationship or the way somebody treated you But I just want to encourage you that God knows you better than you know yourself. And if you'll lean into him, the counselor, the Holy Spirit, he will bring healing to that wound. He will unlock that chain that has got you tangled up. You're still free free to move about the country, but you are spiritually just entangled and held up in bondage today. We have one more verse that I'd like to cover. And David, he gets to the end end of his writing in response to the knowledge of this, of, all, of our all-knowing God. He says this in verse 6, Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. David's response is, man, this is wonderful. This is awesome that you know me so well inside and out, my past, my present, and my future. I can't even understand it all. I don't get it all. But man, this is wonderful. Today, church, how do you respond to the knowledge that God is all-knowing of you? That's where it gets real today. For some of you, you know that you are known by God. And you would use words that, or phrases to describe yourself like this. Some of you, you are known by God, and so you would use words like this. Man, I'm free. I'm completely free just to be me because God knows me. You would use words to describe, I'm full of peace. Like, I just have an, a security and a peace because I know God knows me. Some of you would say, man, I know my worth is found in Jesus. Like, I don't have to prove myself to anybody. I know my worth because Jesus knows me. Others of you would say, man, I'm content in who God has created me to be. I'm just content. Like, man, I can trust. I know him today. Others of you would say, man, I just feel joy. I'm joyful. There might be other words that you would use to describe that you know that you are known by God, but there's others of you that are here today going, man, this is the worst thing ever. This is the worst thing ever that God knows everything about me. He knows my past. Man, this stinks. He knows my present. Yeah, it's it's a little bit better. And you question what the future even holds. And so I just want to encourage you with this, that God sees it all, knows it all understands it all, and so all you have to do is just be honest, honest with yourself and with God. You just got to be honest with yourself and with God. Because here's something that going back to the, your outlook determines your outcome. Think about this. God does with people who desire a spiritual outlook. This is what God does. Your spiritual outlook determines your spiritual outcome. Something happens when you begin to focus from the worldly to the, to the spiritual side. If you're desiring something spiritual, your outlook will determine a spiritual outcome. And the same can be true of a worldly outlook. Your worldly out, outlook determines a worldly outcome. And the reason why I can say this is there's a transformation that took place in a character in the Bible. And I love this, this character because I can relate to him. I know that you should treat better, or people better than 
the way that this gentleman treated people, but I could easily be tempted to treat people the way that he treated people. I could easily come to you and manipulate you and take more for myself. That's how I can relate with this character. This character went from being someone with an outward, worldly focus. It says he was rich. He was a chief tax collector. He was a notorious sinner. He had all the worldly things, but yet he had an insecurity Inside of him, he was lacking significance, he desire, he was known by everybody, hate, loved by some and hated by many, but yet he wasn't known, and this gentleman's name is Zacchaeus. I love the story of Zacchaeus because something begins to change in Zacchaeus. Even though he has all these worldly possessions, it still wasn't enough. He wasn't known by his creator, the almighty God. And so we pick up the story with Zacchaeus where Jesus is coming to town and he's coming through Jericho, and Zacchaeus has heard all about Jesus. He's heard how he's healed the sick. He's heard about Jesus who speaks in parables and just, man, makes you think and asks questions that just make you think that get up all up inside your head. Zacchaeus has heard about Jesus, and Jesus talks about there's, there's more to life than just this world, but there's a future beyond. There's eternal life beyond here. And Zacchaeus is going, man, I got to find, I got to meet with this Jesus. So here comes the crowd of people following Jesus, and little old Zacchaeus, he's a wee little man. A wee little man is he. <laughs> he couldn't see over the top because he was a wee little man. He couldn't get down below to see underneath. So what's he do? He climbs up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to. All right, thank you. You got it. Yeah, we're old. I get it, yeah. But he climbs up there, and he's looking. Where's Jesus at? And unbeknownst to him, Jesus is standing at the foot of the sycamore tree saying, Zacchaeus, come on down, because I'm going to be a guest at your house tonight for dinner. And Zacchaeus, he comes climbing down, and he's all ecstatic, he's excited. And guess what some of the church people do? Why is Jesus hanging out with that guy? He's a notorious sinner. But Zacchaeus is all excited, he's jacked up. He says, come on, Jesus, come on over to my house. And as he begins to sit with Jesus... Because Jesus knew his past and didn't hold it against him. He saw his present, and he was seeking after the Lord. And he gets Zacchaeus and Jesus begin to have a meal together, and they're hanging out. And Zacchaeus says, man, Lord, I'll give away half of my possessions. And if there's anybody that I've stole from, I'll give them four times back what I took. And Jesus says this to Zacchaeus. Today, because of your spiritual outlook, you have a new spiritual outcome. You find salvation, you're finding peace with God, and you're finding peace within yourself because you are known by an almighty God. Today, if you find yourself looking at the world, you can make a decision to change. It just takes a little bit of obedience and a step, whatever that might look like. It might just be, yes, God, today. I know that you see me right where I'm at. See, God's desire is to restore and make us all whole. So this morning, as I begin to wrap up, I, I just want you to maybe put yourself in one of these descriptions. Some of you know that your, your outlook needs to change so that you can find true peace with God to be known. For others of you, you have this wound that you're carrying around that God wants to bring healing to because he knows you better than you know yourself. And then for someone today, you, need, you just need to be reminded that you're loved and known by God. So today when we begin to sing, you just need to come and worship with a grateful heart. Say, God, I know that you see me and you love me. And just let him just wrap you up in your loving arms. Today, will you bring yourself before God to search you and speak to you about you because he knows you? God sees your pain, he sees your joy, he sees everything in the middle today. Today, church, would you stand with me as we pray this morning? God, today we love you and we worship you. We thank you that you're an all-knowing God. God, would you meet us where we're at? I know you're going to do that part, but God, here, here's the other thing. Would you help us to meet you where you're at? Would we take that step 
of boldness and obedience and say, God, uh, yeah, I, I, have a, I have a wound. Would you, would you heal me today? Mentally, would you heal me today? Emotionally, would you heal me today? God, today, if I'm looking to the world for my significance, God, today, would you help me to refocus my eyes physically and spiritually to look to you? God, today, do what only you can do in our hearts and our lives. Transform and change us today in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Let's worship today.